Anyway, shouldn't we talk about some IT-related stuff, or are you happy with Rammstein? I don't know. We, yeah, we can definitely uh, talk IT also, if you want. Because um, you know, a topic that has really been, like, um, uh, just, I, I wouldn't say occupying me, uh, but ha that has definitely been roaming around in my head for the last three months, is um, related to contact tracing, and this thing, okay. whom should we share our data with? Um, but if that topic is too serious for this lively podcast, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> no, no. See, the the title of the podcast is uh, Digitalization and Society. Hello. So, so it's spot it's, on. Yeah, yeah, totally. So see, um, to answer your question already now, uh, the answer is nobody. Shouldn't share your data with anybody. Yeah, because uh, the technology for achieving that is evolving. I yesterday gave a remote talk to the PyData meetup in, in Amsterdam, yeah. um, where I explained how homomorphic encryption, federated learning, um, differential pri uh, privacy, and uh, trusted execution environments work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the technology is right, evolving, and we just need to focus on it and make it production ready. I, I expect this to happen in the next three years okay but but say say i open an internet store where you can buy books and then i yeah. and then you want to order a book and i ask what's your address yeah. you say i should not collect the data of your address uh you sh i mean i am not feeling so well to give everybody my address no not example, everybody just the people who need <laughs> it to get to provide you a service they, they need the data required to provide that service Yeah, that's the GDPR thing, no? Well, now that's not the... So, uh, well, okay, you can you can say that the GDPR has sort of touched upon this topic, fortunately. Uh, but, <laughs> but you can yeah, also, instead okay. of calling it data, I think we get scared when we say data because there is, there, there is so much uh, there's so much politics and privacy issues around data. But let's just okay, call then it information. Okay, let's call it... Okay. So if, if you want me to provide a service to you with my uh, internet store... There, there's a okay. certain amount of information that I need about you to provide the service. Okay. I need your address. I okay. need to what? know which book you want. Okay. Uh, what uh, books do you have? Is it interesting for me to buy it at your store? Uh, absolutely. I have um, your favorite books. Oh, okay. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So you have more, more and better books than Amazon? Um... Well, you could, you could sort of say that if uh, if if my um, if my business goes well, then of course I will have more books than Amazon. But if it goes badly, I will uh, have few books. So I need customers. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean you you have a cool shop because I don't need to give you uh, my address, no. You you do you have to give me your address if you want me to send books. Oh, to you. but that that's old school, no. Yeah, but the question is more: Do you? Because you said you don't want to give your data to anybody. Um, yeah, see, uh, for example, um, I have the possibility to ship parcel to me via a third party provider mm -hmm. without any additional costs, mm -hmm. only some additional work for me. Um, so I pick up the parcel at the station. So I need to show a barcode to the station it opens. Mm -hmm. So I give the other party only the, the ID of that uh, station. Mm -hmm. So that that's one possibility, and a lot of, for example, your main competition, Amazon, is supporting that. Yeah. But I think while you register, you have to give them your address. But uh, I gave them one address in Madrid, which wasn't existing, so they have been happy. Mm -hmm. But then it screwed up the whole system because it was uh, tied to to Spain. So I have given them a second <laughs> fake address in, Germ in Germany. They are happy with that. Slightly one. less, uh, okay, slightly closer to your home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So but you, they have my IP address, uh, but they can't so easily get my home address from my IP address. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So you say I don't want companies to know where I live, because uh, because now they they know which book you ordered, so they can sort of guess your preferences for books. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. That, but but I'm ordering random books on a daily basis, see, to just introduce noise. Yeah, I mean it, it's sad that we should have to do that to the environment only so that we can't be modeled against our will. Yeah, e-books, e-books, of course, only. It, only e-books, yeah. But I mean, e-books, yeah, yeah. you know, information on the internet, that's... Uh, <laughs> uh, no, really. Some generator yeah. will have to run the service where that information is stored. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm, no, see, I'm a physicist, honest, uh, right? And I can tell you that no matter what we do on the planet, we're increasing the temperature. Even if we just sit down and meditate, there will be there will be okay. heat generated by that. But but it's uh, renewable, no? No. The heat we generate, no? The, the, no, the, like the, the friction in my brain kind of heat is just just radiated. It's not renewable. Oh, okay. I mean, re But it's renewable like minimizing is a bit of a misleading word. We mean recyclable, as in you can reuse okay, part recyclable. of it. Okay, so that energy I'm radiating uh, has already been received by the planet and be and absorbed by the planet from the sun. Yeah, and then you and then you because uh, you know the um, uh, the laws of thermodynamics kind of tell us that the energy will always be converted to a lower form, so it's going to be less and less uh, easy for you to use that energy. And, and in the end, it's all just going to be low energy photons raiding off into space. Okay, that's completely unusable. Yeah, completely unusable. But, um, but okay, okay, so b back, back to, the, to the bookstore example. How about uh, the country that you live in? They need your information for taxation purposes. You want to pay taxes, right? You want to be a good citizen. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure whether they need that information. How should yeah, they Yeah, the country check? they need. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay, country is okay. Country is okay. Yeah. Oh, that's that's I mean, oh, that's super interesting because lately it seems a bit like we would rather give our location information to tech giants than to our countries, and I've been wondering why. Um maybe we trust them more. Why do we trust the tech giants more than our country? The tech giants have one reason for existing, and that's making money, right? Because if they don't make money, they go bankrupt. They stop existing. Yeah, but if they screw up their reputation with us, then they are not making any money. So they are maybe really focused on keeping all in control. Whereas the government... Is it that easy? Trust... I don't like Zucky, but I have to be on Facebook because my mother's on Facebook. It's not that easy. Can't you force your mother to go off Facebook? I've tried. She's a, she's a local politician, so it's sort of everything happens on Facebook. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, that's a complete vendor login. I mean, that that's that's the tip of the iceberg, no? That's we are mm. already totally screwed. Yes, I like that conclusion. We're screwed, and we need a new planet. Uh, At least a new IT infrastructure. Yeah, or that. How would you enforce that? Government level, or would you do your own startup? Um, or the EU? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, uh, the EU is quite promising. You are you are not in the EU, no? Uh, no, but we sort of we're kind of like we have one leg inside the EU and one outside. We don't have a euro. Uh, we're not in the EU, but yeah, we adopted the GDPR and implemented it more or less the way that it stands. So, yeah. Ah, that sounds like Switzerland and maybe the future of UK, no? Oh, do you think, uh, do you think that's, yeah, you think the UK is just gonna stick with, because I mean, the UK now leaving, leaving the EU, they don't have to uh, keep GDPR. They can just go full US to, yeah. with their data and just sell it and get rich. Yeah, I guess, I think uh, they will, because I think Trump was very happy that, that, uh, about Brexit. I guess, because they have now their foot into the e EU or into Europe. Yeah. I mean, they anyway have because they have the satellite remote control station in Germany. And I think they have uh, 20 uh, nuclear weapons in Germany already. So they're already in. No, no problem. They don't need oh. UK. Oh, yeah. Ooh, very ominous. <laughs> Okay, so back to your bookstore. Um, yes. So let me think how... Yeah, see, uh, let, let's go one step back. We have this homomorphic encryption stuff mm -hmm. where we can process on the data as it were unencrypted. Mm -hmm. And the result can then be decrypted by the key which has been used to encrypt it. So then you can tell me how you will use this system in your bookstore. To keep my data private. No, I can't tell you that. You can't do. No, okay, I do statistics, data analysis, physics. I don't do encrypt encryption. Actually, if if there ever appears an app built by me, 
don't use it. Why? Because I can't do app development or encryption. Not yet. Not yet. I mean, I love thinking about uh, different uh, encryption methods, and I love having them explained to me using uh, bunnies or little uh, little cartoons. Um, okay. But I can't. I, I'm not gonna. No, I think I'm gonna hire an IT expert actually for my store. Uh, so there's a job opening, very interesting, in Norway, okay. coming soon. If you want, you can have it. Okay. Okay. Security responsible. Can I work Ingo remotely store. from my car, or do I have to? Stick with you and you sitting in front of me and telling me what to do all day long. Mm, maybe the first week I'm gonna sit tell, sit and tell you what to do, and then it's gonna become okay. obvious that I don't know what I'm talking about, and then you can work from your car again. Awesome, that that's a deal. Okay, so I'm 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 gonna be your privacy and security expert. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. So okay, as my so privacy I'm... and security expert, do you think it's all right that I um, store information? about uh, my customers' preferences forever and ever, as long as I encrypt it? <laughs> uh, I mean, if you can read it, it's it's not very nice of you, no? Not very nice, no. Okay. But, but why is it not very nice? Um, yeah, see, then what you basically do is you create a psychological profile of your clients. Yeah. And that is in your possession mm -hmm. and maybe you are becoming evil or you are forced to become evil or you sell your company to somebody evil and then this information is disclosed. Mm, okay, but I have I have the best of intentions. I just want to sell good books and I'm going to enrich people's lives by giving them exactly the books um, uh, they need and want before they even know that they want the books. Um, so it's really to yes, improve see, their lives. I mean, it's, it's totally okay. worth the risk. Do you think? Yeah, so see, the US gave, uh, no, Germany gave US the access to the satellite remote control station with the best intentions, mm. and now it turns out to be problematic. So the same can happen to your bookstore. Okay. Is there no way that I can build trust from my customers? Is there no way that I can prove that I'm trustworthy? Do, do we, uh, does the digital world mean uh, constant vigilance and not trusting anybody? Yes, yes, you got it. Finally. Ah, okay. Finally. So there's no no trust. No, no. So security and privacy by design means that you don't need to trust anybody, besides yourself. Hmm. Isn't I mean is that okay? Okay, I accept it. But isn't that a bit sad? I mean, we're very advanced uh, species here. We want to colonize the galaxy and what have you. And when we just lived on on in villages and farms, we knew whom we could trust. Um. So, but does this transition to a digital life? and data-driven society and all that, does that mean that trust is just conceptually impossible? Uh, yes, because let's consider uh, the world to be modeled as a graph, mm -hmm. as a directed weighted graph, and each edge is uh, telling you about the influence one entity has on the others. And then it turns out that there are some hotspots, you know, some nodes in the graph has have many edges to the others mm -hmm. so that means they have a lot of influence and if there's only one single bad actor the whole graph gets poisoned so that's the problem oh no okay okay so there there just has to be one jackass out there and the whole trust system is screwed uh, as long as the black ass doesn't have power it's not a problem but but if a black ass gets power then the whole system is screwed even okay. if all the others are yogis, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna buy this because you are my chief uh, trust engineer, right? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are. Ah, so I have the job. I have the job. You have the job. Uh, salary is not great, um, but it's okay. I, I I'm working for for like making the planet better, so it's okay. Exactly, and how else to make the planet better than to sell books? Um, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, mm. uh, Bezos was doing this as well, no? So I um, uh, I talked with a friend yesterday who had been uh, at a presentation by Amazon. So the information I'm about to hand to you now is very second, third hand. Um, okay. And, um, and basically they talked about data analysis and how they could, from Amazon fashion, uh, know which clothes that would appeal to you based on data completely unrelated to your fashion sense and size and everything. 
uh, just uh, what you like to watch, uh, what you've been eating lately, um, stuff like uh, have you recently been pregnant? And I don't know. I, I don't even know how Amazon are going to get these data. But doesn't it kind of tickle the nerd inside you to know that you could sort of you could be provided with perfect clothes without ever having to, you know, uh, try on clothes and, and, and think about colors and what fits together and think about fashion. You could just have like clothes delivered to your doorstep. And if you don't like them, you just send them back. That sounds to me like the piece where uh, Neil was asked whether he wants to get the blue or the red pill. Okay, and which, so, uh, what, what would you do? Yeah, I'm definitely uh, leaving the Matrix. Living in the Matrix is completely boring, no? Leave, but leaving get, the Matrix, does that mean not, not taking the clothes? Yeah, yeah, buying the clothes myself in the store I like is, is better. Really? But then you have to think about fashion and size and you have to take time for it. You have to go to the store. It's not good for the environment that you should be moving your body around. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, ordering online. You're ordering online, so that's basically... Yeah, and it, you just want to do. You want to make the decision that a computer could make for you. Uh, yeah, I'm not trusting the computer because, for example, uh, I'm only using uh, fair trade stuff. Mm. No, I don't know whether the computer knows that, and I'm not caring too much about my style. At, as soon as it fits, more or less, I'm happy. And I don't know if the computer knows all that. Mm. Yeah, and I can verify that he did the correct decisions. Let me think about it. But I'm I'm feeling a bit like uh, living in the matrix. So so it's okay. So what's the problem here? Is the problem here that you give away uh, the data needed to make this decision for you, or is the um, problem that kind of your authority is taken away from you that you still want to make active choices, or is it both? Yeah. So so my uh, cortex thinks that. The data shouldn't be given away, mm -hmm. and uh, the layers below the cortex they feel that I won't do the decision myself somehow. Okay, so it's yeah. it's both. It's uh, the yeah. CTO saying we can't trust this, and then it's uh, your instincts telling the, you that you have to remain sharp. Yes, yes. Mm. But it's it's a nice idea. Uh, so the reason why this works is, uh, and I believe that it works, is all about the the latent. Um, representations no that's the, what the brain is doing no if if i see you i might guess what type of style you have mm. maybe i'm wrong but uh, the information i have about you is very limited no i'm i mean we met once in in warsaw and then mm. we had some chats and this call now so it's hard to tell but i guess uh, i have a rough idea what style of clothing you like but uh, such system has has more information mm. And therefore can create more precise latent uh, features for you mm. and those features you even don't know because you don't have the complete view like Amazon then has yeah and that's that's the critical point no if some non or, or weakly regulated entity and at the end of the day one edge in the graph is controlling so much data to create latent features about you mm. which you even can't imagine i think that's like a nuclear weapon no? so you have to be careful who you give the nuclear yeah. weapon yeah i i agree that it has the power of a nuclear weapon but i don't think that it looks to us like a nuclear weapon i mean i i usually yeah. say that ai isn't dynamite ai is climate change um because <laughs> you know data analysis that creeps up on us and it's very comfortable And we don't notice how bad it and, and how threatening it can be to us until you have the tsunamis and the catastrophes where you go like, oh, oh, this is how far it's come. And then we're in the middle of a system that it's very hard to turn around because we build up our lives around it. That's very good. Yeah, that comparison I like. I haven't always, uh, I, th I thought all this, uh, it's, it's like plutonium, no? All mm -hmm. said that uh, data is the new oil. <laughs> I also saw a t-shirt that data is the new tofu, but... Uh, data is the new tofu, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now data is, is the new plutonium. Yeah. That's, that was I was always talking about, but I think climate change is, is hitting it far better, so I, I will change all my slides. Nice! Remember to credit yeah. me. Of course, of course. Yeah, because I've gone back into research now. 
Um, so I, oh, yeah. yeah, so I need to, you know, become known for my brain things. Um, it's not enough that I can sell things. Okay. Mm. So you are working at a university or research institution? Or research institution. You... Yeah. Um, and, um, actually I am, I, I'm back to, because we discussed this in Warsaw also explainable AI. Yeah. Um, cause I just remember when I, um, when, when I first, okay. So I, I started doing AI, like before machine learning was cool. Uh, I told you that okay. I have a, a love for a lisp and just good old fashioned AI and all that stuff. And then, and then I went and did a PhD in particle physics. Um, and while I was doing that, I started using machine learning and I, okay. and at first I was like really overwhelmed. Like, how can it be, uh, that, uh, matrices can like understand reality um as good as i can and like any statistical methods i can come up with can um and then after a while i think i turned it around and instead of being like overwhelmed by machine learning i'm now underwhelmed by reality like how stupid is reality that we can model it um and not to talk about humans we are so predictable just like you said you've met me twice and then talked to me and you can probably predict many things about me Like my clothing style, yeah. just just based on you know where I work now and where I worked before, we're so predictable. It's dangerous. It's just any Coursera educated person uh, can can predict stuff about me accurately. That's scary. Yeah, as long as he has the data. No? As long as he has the data. Yeah. So the data is like the, uh, the like the little the 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 the, the drop, like the magic ingredient. Once somebody has yeah, data, yeah. they 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 can have you know knowledge. Yeah, because Oof. the algorithms are pretty old. I mean, there are some new ones, but most of that stuff is like 30 years old. No? Mm, yeah. So, um, but do you have nasty students you have to teach, or you can? Are you doing full time research? Yeah, no. I I mean, the job I've landed now, it's like um, I'm just waiting for somebody to, to 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 wake me up, kind of. I walk around asking people to pinch me because there are no students, uh, no teaching. Uh, I mean, I I can supervise if I want to, because it happens uh, to be that I really love students, especially master students. Um, but I don't have to. I can just do research and go to conferences all all the time. Oh, that sounds like a great job. How did you get that? Uh, gave a talk. Gave a talk. I was discovered at a conference. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, so cool. Okay. So uh, what are you researching about then? Well, as I said, explainable AI. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but uh, can you Or, be uh, yeah. a bit more precise? But of course, I can be more precise. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it's, um, there are sort of several directions one can go and perhaps should go. Um, so uh, I, I think that it's very important these days to build a bridge between statistics and machine learning. Because it's almost like there's a little gap between. And also there, it's oh, almost like there are, no? yeah, and there are like two cultures. Um, on yeah. one hand, you have uh, convolutional neural nets. And on the other hand, you have linear regression kind of. And very often when the yeah, cultures yeah. meet, they clash. And I think that's a pity because I'm really of the opinion that if we all want to achieve the same thing, which is good lives for everybody, and, and many of us are brilliant, we should kind of work together. Yeah. Uh, kumbaya. Uh, so w what I try to do is to, to, to understand like game theoretical methods like Shapley values. Uh, stuff like that, uh, which which have like a solid theoretical foundation and then use them on machine learning models and just see. Because, um, I mean, in, in statistics, you have to like really, really know your assumptions and what happens if a, if an assumption is validated, is, um, uh, um, is not valid anymore. Uh, while in machine learning, it looks more like you just, oh, no, you test your way there and just turn the knobs and see what works and just make sure to have a validation set and you're good. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, scratching my head looking into that stuff these days. Okay. Um, and then also I have a little, uh, little beef with heat maps. Um, cause, cause I think that if you, if you show a person, like if I show my mother a heat map, uh, showing what a convolutional neural network uh, looked at when it classified a picture, um, my mother will say, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, the, the heat map uh, of the dog shows me that it used the face for classification. 
Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's just so important that we remember that we can't have any intuition for what machine learning systems do. Um, so just staring at a heat map and then kind of projecting my uh, intuitive uh, thought process onto the machine and thinking that the machine will have seen the same thing in the picture as I will see is, is completely faulty. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about like how how can we make something as intuitive as heat maps but more precise? Okay. Um, and so what's um, the solution? You have something already? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> I mean, it works works for for image processing only. It seems though, because uh, otherwise it's hard to visualize. Yeah. Um, but do you agree that it's Besides that, relatively complex to to do that. What you are talking about, because you have a series of nonlinear vector space transformations, mm -hmm. and nobody knows what's going on inside. No? Yeah, but I think it's important that we remember that just because we can't have intuition for something doesn't mean that we can't have knowledge about it. Um, so I think we have to just um, stop hoping for or demanding intuition. Uh, from explanations of, of anything, also of machine learning, and then just tr try to like um, rationally make uh, interpretable either methods or just directly models, um, and just kind of, to put it in a very popular scientific form, kind of learn how we should communicate with the models or with the machines. Um, okay. So, uh, so then how to translate knowledge kind of. Uh, but I mean, you can do like distances in latent spaces or whatever, um, and then try to translate that somehow to something that makes, you know, sense to your brain. Okay. So you are not giving up on on that complexity of the black box no. deep learning models. No, because I mean, just that we don't know now how we should solve something doesn't mean that we can't solve it. I mean, in theory, everything okay. is a black box, right? A conductor is a black box okay. until I start poking it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, okay, great. And I mean, just how you know? How can it even be when you think about it that a uh, um, a neural network can even like how how should a neural network learn what the concept dog is? Because I mean, they're just I'm just, I'm just talking images and and um, and visual systems now because they're very intuitive to us. Don't doesn't have to be concepts represented as images. But I mean, you have sort of a million dimensional feature space. Um, yeah. so, meaning that you can't map out the whole feature space. It's just impossible. So the data is going to be very sparsely scattered around in the feature space. But mm -hmm. if it, but I, yeah, but I think the brain learns uh, a dog like you get the latent representation of of a dog from seeing a lot of dogs. Mm -hmm. That's completely unsupervised. So that's dimension reduction, mm -hmm. restricted Boltzmann machines, or autoencoder style. Mm -hmm. And then you get Uh, the label once, two or three times. If your parents tell you, "Oh, that uh, neural representation is a dog," yeah, and then all the dogs you see in future and in the past is mapped to this label. No? That's like a combination of a unsupervised dimension reduction system. Yeah, you get the latent features, and then you just label that neural activation. Yeah, and how I just found out how the brain works. Is that true? Uh, I don't know how the brain works. Uh, incident. Yeah, maybe that that's a crucial part. No? Uh, I don't know, because I mean, airplanes don't look like metal birds, um, so I don't think that making intelligence has to boil down to making uh, si silicon brain. Um, okay, got it. Um, but I mean, the fact that you can show a kid ten dogs and then they know like more or less all dogs in the world if the dog isn't really strange. Um, would kind of suggest to like a physicist like me that there is a concept dog out there in the real world. Um, and I kind of don't even know if I believe in the real world. Um, so it's very strange to me that the, the concept of dog should exist. I think the concept electron exists. Um, but, okay. but, but how, how I mean, the, 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 the data or our behavior seems to indicate that there is such a concept dog. Um, yeah, so let, let's skip the quantum field theory question I had, but it just popped into my mind when you uh, mentioned uh, the concept of electron. Yeah. Let's keep that for the next discussion yeah. because I know you've only seven and a half minutes left. Um, but as I said, um, everything you see 
gives you a newer representation, so some some representation in the latent feature space. Mm -hmm. And let's let's consider the the bird versus plane example. I'm using your example in another context mm -hmm. now. So if a child sees birds and planes, um, they give similar but different latent neural representations. So um, if the neural representation for a bird is then labeled by your parents as a bird, you the child also might point to a plane mm. and tell you and say a giant bird. A plane. Yeah, see. Yeah. And then uh, the parents say, oh no, this is a plane. And then this uh, latent feature space, which is uh, overlapping for both of the examples, but still is different, is getting subdivided. And, and you get two labels for the two divisions of late feature space. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of hierarchical. Yeah, I and agree. And, yeah. And, and that's why you can also learn that, well, a uh, wolf is actually not a dog. Even though if you live in a city for a long time, maybe a wolf is just a kind of a dog to you. Um, so yeah, I yeah. absolutely agree on that. Um, just a small clarification. The, the thing with the, with the metal bird and the plane was I meant um, when we made airplanes for the first time, we wanted to make machines that fly. We didn't copy birds and make metal birds, you know, we just made something else instead. There is nothing like the airplane in nature. So I don't think that we need to copy the brain to make intelligence. Yeah, yeah. I, I got that. That's why I said I'm using your example in another context. Ah, okay, okay. Do you, do you <laughs> no think problem. we have to model the brain? Uh, let's say it's a good start. I mean, we started with uh, artificial birds as well. So mm -hmm. at least wings we still have. And something moving we still have, just mm. uh, something moving we move to another path. So you think we should be like inspired by nature's model and then diverge at some point? Uh, as long as we cannot come up with something else, which is better. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. It's a good start, no? And we have to be pragmatic about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, so... Yeah, just another argument why I think that explainable AI is important. Um, so I've been uh, I've been really looking for research about whether or not uh, your activity on social media can show what state of mind you're in. And I mean, I've found some like semi um, uh, scientific looking uh, evidence that um, your Facebook activity and I mean, Facebook records absolutely everything. They even record the statuses you delete and end up not sending, right? A Facebook activity can show when a depressed person goes into a manic state. Um, and even before you can, before a psychologist could spot that. I mean, that's just okay. perfect for, uh, because in a manic state, you're very, um, very spontaneous, right? So that would be perfect for selling them stupid plane tickets to LA and stuff like that. Um, awesome, a business model. Business model, huh? But I just think that if you then had to actually explain why are you offering me this ticket to LA? And you could get an answer because you're on your way into a manic state. Um, then that would just make uh, make it more trustworthy, even though we don't believe in trust anymore. Yeah, so that's ruining the business model, no? Then yeah, if you have if you have the answer to each action the system does against you, mm. then you trust the system, but then you don't use it anymore. Yeah, that's true. So we have to have a discussion at some point where we want to go with society and data and all that. If we want to, I mean, what is the goal? Is the goal to make money or to uh, to create value? Um, and if not, we're going to end up in a misaligned uh, gold scenario long before our robots become sentient and get red eyes and laser guns. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have to do a second uh, talk soon. Yeah, let's do that. That's true. Okay, so I leave you and you can join your other meeting. Uh -huh. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Have fun <laughs> in your car. Okay. Yeah, I have. <laughs> have fun wherever you are. Thank bye. you. Bye.